and great, and all of a sudden you just kind of find yourself not in the house of God, and, and you're trying to manage on your own, and then you hit this, this wall. You go through a couple of experiences, and all of a sudden you come back into the place that you know you can touch God. Come forward, you give your heart over to God, you dedicate your life back to God, and everything starts going good again, and all of a sudden, you're back away from God. You're struggling in a relationship. See, somebody here this morning needs to hear this, and everybody needs to tune in for just a moment. God has never failed you. It's the, those individuals in your life that you put so much effort in that's failed. Individuals that you looked up to but yet still human, they failed. The husband that said that they would love you forever, it failed. The wife that said that they'll never leave you, that they will love you and give unto you, they failed. had people in your life that biologically is your brother and sister the blood runs from the same parents but you find that they failed but the same God that reached down into the lives of so many people including you throughout history is still the same God today. He's still setting people free from the bondage of, of addictions and bondage of, of those three things, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. The same God that we serve on an everyday basis. Or can I back this up and say what we try to serve on Sunday? For God's good graces. And then Monday we hit the world and we're right back in the midst of the mess and the nonsense. And I had an old, old, old preacher tell me. He says, The only change that ever matters. is a change with intent. Now think about that for a moment. You can say, I'm sorry, but the only thing that validates that is not doing it again. The change within you is in the change of intent. I am going to be intentional in worshiping God. I'm going to be intentional in serving God. I'm going to be intentional in coming together. See, just coming underneath the roof of a house... It's about us coming in as the church body, as the believers of who we are in this congregation. But it's what we do when we walk out the door that will have an effect on somebody. So this morning, you don't have to leave in the same way you came in. The burden of sin in your life you have to have, you literally have to ask for forgiveness. With the intent of not doing it, to change with intent. You cannot go back out into the world and live the life that you were living before you came to know who Christ is. And I've been told all kinds of things. Well, Pastor, that'll that'll cramp my style. Pastor, that, that it, that'll mean I have to lose all my friends. Well, I'd rather go to heaven. Well, you're not going to heaven alone. I'm going. Hang out with me. Of course, you ain't going to be really important. I'm going to be at the foot of Jesus just worshiping the whole time. But some of us are so afraid of losing an old life that's going to take us straight to hell. And for some, it's saying, oh my gosh, he's just, you know, there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And if you don't choose right, if you don't choose to serve God, if you don't find yourself coming back to a place, maybe you've never given your heart to God. 
But it's more than a song. It's a fact. He is the same God, the same God that saved. Some of you that are here this morning, some that are watching online, you just need to find yourself giving yourself and heart the whole thing back to who God is. And some of you, you're going to have to ponder it for a while. We got kids and grandkids. We got brothers and sisters, siblings. Some of us even have parents that need to find who God is. As the praise team walks off the platform. You may be seated, you can remain standing. Church, if you are not right, Before God, you're running a risk. Just simply because you come to the house of the Lord. And you may raise your hands and you may say, Lord, Lord. According to scripture, you may not enter in. We have to find ourselves identifying Oh, isn't that a term that makes me sick? But we need to find ourselves truly being what God's called us to be. And we need to identify as believers, followers of Christ. I'm going to step over. I'm going to this side. You ready for it? And not just church members. Can't get any better than that. That's the facts. You can come to the house of God. You can sit in his presence, feel the blessings, have the emotions. All this thing starts to concur within you. And then all of a sudden, when we walk out of here, cussing like a sailor, acting up, doing all the things that just totally is against what God wants. But in Christ, there's hope. Amen? Amen. If I let any of you feel like your shins was just removed, it's not me. It's just God. No more can you come to a house of God, no matter where you're at across this nation, around the world. All because you come doesn't make you any more a Christian than what you was until you accepted him. Amen? Amen? Now to make you smile. I get to do something that I've always loved doing as a pastor. First off, I love receiving what God has given you into the house of the Lord. So this morning as the ushers come, I want to ask that we just together, you hold up your tithe, hold up your offerings. Heavenly Father, this day, God, everything that you have given me, given my wife, my family, we give back to you. God, because you've always been faithful, find us faithful. Touch the hearts that have a heart to give and soften the hearts that are begrudging what they give. Find us faithful in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. As they pass amongst you, I also want to recognize a few individuals. You 
know, there's some days this pulpit needs to be this much wider. I'm going to ask you to stand this morning. I believe at least one of each family is here. Uh, Pastor Luke, if you will stand along with Jen. Without Jen, uh, the children would not have been managed. Jen took over watching all the children. Uh, But these individuals that I call their names uh, have went through successfully and been certified in Financial Peace University. And uh, that's a big accomplishment. There's a lot of work that goes in. It has a rethinking of, of how finances are, and it's all about God. So if you hear your name, and I, again, I know that some of your spouses are not here, but will Seth and Alyssa please stand? <laughs> Remain standing. Noel, if you will stand, her husband is not here this morning. Preston, will you please stand? Remain standing. His wife, Carly, is home with not one but two sick, very sick babies. Uh, Tony and Rennie, if you will please stand. And Trevor and Sammy Joe. Let them know. Really give them a hand clap of appreciation. Praise God. You may be seated. Mike Bowman, come up here and pull that out for me where I don't fall on my face. Thank you. Now I can talk without that ringing in my kneecaps. Amen. Announcements. Today is the last Sunday. And there's only so many slots that are still available. But if you want to purchase a Mother's Day carnation bouquet... Soul Fire is using this as a fundraiser for them. They're going to have three pink, three red. It's on the screen in front of you. It's $10 per bouquet, but they need that ordered today and paid for. So uh, be a part of that. Ladies, Titus together. The annual fall retreat will be held on September the 22nd, 23rd, and the 24th. The cost is $175 for the full weekend, $50 for Saturday only, and $50 non-refundable registration is needed to save your spot. And what I was informed in the last staff meeting at Tuesday of this past week, that one house is completely booked already. So you need to sign up, see my lovely wife, Annette. Stand up. Let Let me just show you off. Not as a pastor, as her husband. Hubba, hubba. (laughs) 33 years. She needs a medal. (laughs) Or what she would prefer is white gold with some diamonds is what she would like. But... uh, (laughs) And if you are a guest here, there's some welcome cards in front of you. Just fill it out. This is what the welcome card looks like. It's green with welcome on the front, information on the back. We just want to connect with you, not just mess with you, but connect with you. Today, I'm I'm privileged, as I started to say earlier, of being able to dedicate children back to God. In Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16, this is what it says. Then they brought little children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. For such is the kingdom of God, verse 15. 
Assuredly, I say to you, now this is Christ speaking. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter in. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. There's a few things that we can learn. Go ahead and put that picture of that beautiful little baby's feet. When I looked at it, I was trying to figure out what that one toe was in the middle, and I had to count them again. <laughs> Truly, I am blessed to be able to stand before a congregation and dedicate children. And one of the things that we can learn from this passage of Scripture is we do baby dedications because baby dedications are biblical. It says in the Word that Christ said, let them come to me. And we have to find that in our hearts we know that as we give back to God what He's blessed us with, what we have the opportunity to give unto Him, He's able to put his hands upon it as Jesus did. And, and there's a blessing that comes just simply by the hands of God. The second thing is why we do baby dedications is because it has a, a testimony, a message of who we are. And, and uh, John, when you get up there, I, there's ringing everywhere up here for me, bud. The message is not obscure or minor. The message is essential to the life of the kingdom of God. And this message, though it's simple, it's profound. See, we can understand that, that Christ got upset. That the children was not allowed. And, and, and I've been in churches where the kids were... You know, they always was pushed off somewhere. We have a beautiful children's department downstairs. But we have also the need of seeing our kids, like the last Sunday of last month, just last week, of having a family worship time. See, I love when, when children come, and, and I don't have any of them upstairs right now, but in my Wednesday night class that I'm teaching... I've got one individual, and we've, I've been giving out points. I have one individual that's already received 18,000 points. And just last Wednesday, he quoted Genesis 1, 2, and 3 from Genesis 1 verbatim. And I was thankful for that. It excites me to see the power and the anointing of what happens when we give our children back to God. And in the baby dedication that we're about to do, when we give our, our children back to God, we give him full authority of who he is over our children. I've been blessed to dedicate many of your children back to God in this building. But this morning as I ask, Danny and her mother and little Hayden to come forward. My prayer is that as God receives a dedicated purpose within our hearts, that the blessings of who he is will overflow in this young man's life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Good morning. Can I have one of your sharks for a moment? Just, okay. If we would cling to Jesus like he clings to those sharks, <laughs> amen, amen. So Danny, as you stay in here this morning, this is a... 
a very serious thing. As you and your mother are part of this church is here where I'm going to ask you some questions. And uh, then church, I'm going to ask you some questions. And then I'm going to ask those that will point your hands. We're going to pray. Amen. And uh, you're looking good there. He, he looks sharp enough to preach. Amen. So, Danny and Tracy, as you stand here, do you today recognize that little Hayden was a gift of God? Do you dedicate Hayden back to the Lord who gave him to both of you, surrendering all the worldly claims upon their lives in the hope that he will belong to God wholly? W-H-O-L-L-Y. Yeah. Do you pledge as a parent and a grandparent that with God's fatherly help that you will bring him up knowing the discipline of God, discipline of his word, the instruction of his word, making every reasonable effort to keep him in the house of God and underneath the knowledge of who God is. If so, do you promise to provide through God's blessings for him physically, emotionally, intellectually, and especially spiritually? Do you promise with God's help to make prayer a regular part of your lives as you pray over him? For his life. Do you promise to follow faithfully what the word of God says in bringing up a child? To the congregation. I'm going to ask you these questions. Will you, as members of this congregation, be faithful to your calling as a member of the body of Christ so that these, this child, and all the other children within this building will see in the midst of who you are Christ-like attitudes, Christ-like love, Christ-like caring? If so, answer we will. Will Will you pray for Hayden on a continuous basis? If you will, say I will. Will Will you pray for Danny and for his grandmother Tracy as they need the strength, as you can tell? (laughs) Will you pray for them as the Lord lays them upon your heart? If so, answer We will. will. I ask that you're always an encourager. Encourager to Danny, to Tracy. Be an encourager to little Hayden. And if you'll do that, if you will speak life over them, they will grow. Will you do that? Now I'm going to ask you to point your hands this way. This may be more difficult, but it's going to be accomplished. Everybody point your hands this way. Heavenly Father, right now, Lord, we pray for this young man. God, that you will touch him from the very top of his head, the very soles of his feet, from fingertip to fingertip. God, we give him back to you. We dedicate him to you. God, we ask for strength for for Danny, his mother, for Tracy as a grandmother. God, we pray that they would have strength. God, that they would be lifted up. And God, for little, little Hayden, I ask God that he will always see Christ in them and in us as a congregation. God, you give him unto her. Now we give him back. 
And we ask, God, that you have your way in his life. And we all ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I have, oh, oh, we're not done. <laughs> Here's a Bible that I encourage your mother to read to you, and there's a note from, from us as a church. This is a certification that is a legal document. And it says here that we as members of the Spirit of Life Church of God do hereby certify that on the seventh day of May in the year of our Lord, 2023, Based on the vow of commitment of his family, Hayden James Dufresne, right, mm -hmm. was dedicated to our Lord Jesus Christ at Spirit of Life, Church of God, Fond du Lac, and it's been signed and dated by myself. Thank you. Now, the most important document that I'm going to hand, I'm going to read. Well, those were important, but... Hayden, this is for you. Make sure your mom does not throw it away. I heard she has a purging thing going on. That she, um. Dear Hayden, we want to welcome you today into a new journey with our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, on May 7, 2023, your family has made a vow and commitment to God to dedicate themselves to bring you up in the ways of the Lord Jesus Christ through word, deed, and prayer. They have pledged to bring you up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord, making every reasonable effort with patience and love. Patience. Yeah. And love. <laughs> to build the word of God into your life. They have promised to instruct you in the teachings of Jesus Christ and the practice of prayer, to guide you in the development of Christ-like character as well as to provide for you physically, emotionally, intellectually, and spiritually. They have promised to the best of their ability to shape your home, your home life by family devotions and being a living example. Moving on. Together with your family who love you dearly, God's people who care about the outcome of your faith, we've dedicated you to God, surrendering together with them all worthy, worldly claims upon your life. Okay, let me get down to the important part. You ready? Listen. Okay, listen. If your family is not behaving accordingly to their vows, please call me. So that I can have a talk with them to keep them accountable to their promise. Sincerely, Pastor Jay. Amen. One more prayer. One more prayer. God, I ask that you truly use all this energy in this little boy for your benefit. <coughs> God, touch him in ways that he can go out and touch the world. Amen. Let him be the greatest promise to fulfill your calling upon his life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, give him a hand clap. Give them a hand clap. With all the love in my heart, please pray for his mama. Maybe we could take up a collection and give her a spa day. Because uh, in another year or two, he's going to be as big as she is. Amen. It's 11 o'clock. Can I have 10 minutes? If, who don't want to give me 10 minutes? You can give me $10. Patrick, for you, I'll only charge you five, okay? I want to talk with you this morning about giving back.
giving back. It's amazing what we can accomplish when we give back to God. Go to Psalms for me, Caleb. It's the pictures. What can I give back to God? Psalms 116 and 12, for the blessing he's poured out on me. What can we give back to God? Now, we've all been in these situations. You can say amen if you're in this case. You're trying to buy a gift for someone that has everything. It's extremely difficult, isn't it? So what do you give to God that he has need of? How can we give back to God something in return for all that he's done for who we are? The blessings that he's poured out upon our lives. Well, the first thing that we must understand is that we give back from the heart. The feeling of who we are and who he is. We have to give from a heart filled, not with an abundance of things, but in the abundance of love. See, when we give back and we know that through the power and the anointing of God that we can find ourselves at a place that, that when we look at our Heavenly Father, we say, what can we give him this morning? I just want to take a few moments. Turn your Bibles if you have them. They'll come on the screen before you. But Matthew chapter 10. Verses 37 and 38. And this is what it says. Matthew chapter 10 verses 37 and 38. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Verse 38. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Now let me explain what that means. If you don't love God more than anything else in this world, do you truly love God? My wife, as I showed her off a while ago, I love her. And when I say I love her, she has been the best thing that God has ever gifted me. But she knows and she will testify to the fact that I love God more than I love her. That's how it's supposed to be. I was blessed with a wonderful, talented son, a daughter. I have many grandkids. I know I'm blessed, but I love God more than I love them. And there's some days in that passage of Scripture in verse 38, there's some days when it says to take up your cross and follow me, it means that the cross is death. We have to take on the role of allowing death to everything else. Be a part of our thoughts and our minds and our hearts. We can get an amen or an oh me. That when we look and find the focus of what God wants, He's all he really desires is to have you and I completely. Nothing being kept in reserve. Nothing being held back. But everything that we are. Who we are in mind and our spirit, our physical being, God wants us. And when we start giving back to God, it brings us to a place. And no matter what, what you have, whatever God has already gifted you with, if you're talented, if, if you have this wonderful way of having a gifting of hospitality or friendship or, or growing into the knowledge of being able to speak to someone and counsel, and no matter what your gift is, if it's able to play a guitar, to to play the drums, to sing in a microphone, to be on the piano, 
Whatever gift that God's given you, you have to learn to give it back because that's what he desires is that you would come into a place of submission and subjection to who he is. And when we find ourselves doing this, we'll see that there's a confirmation of our, our, our love for who God is. See, when we start giving back to God, God will start showing you if you're not faithful in a little Never expect a lot. If God can't find you faithful in what little bit that he's been given to you, we can reference our tithe. We can reference our talents. We can reference back to who we are in him. God has made each one of us special. I remember the first couple of sermons that I, I preached here over six years ago. I made a statement, and it's hung out with some of you. I said, you're special. Not short bus special, but you're special. <laughs> There's a confirmation of who God is when we start giving back to him everything. Not trying to hold out for ourselves. How many of you know that God will always provide for you if you're always faithful to him? Amen. I was told one time, they said, Pastor, you're the only person I know that can... Fall face first in the feedlot and come up with a rose between your teeth. I have proven, my wife and I and our family has proven if you'll give everything back to God, He allows you, He prospers you, He blesses you. Another thing we learn is there a clarification of who we are in Christ when we start giving back, not conditionally, but unconditionally giving back to God. There's a clarification. We know that God is able and we can do great things through Him. And if we follow Christ, we will never lack. Oh, we'll go through hard times because the Word of God says so. But those hard times are meant to build you up, to make you better, to find things within your life that you have to, can I use the word tweak a little bit? You got to readjust. I, I got some farmers and some contractors in here. They're bob bobbing their head. Like, yeah, there's some days that if it don't fit, you got to shave a little off of it. You know what I'm saying? So there's times in our lives that, that confirmation and clarification start. But what God really wants is that when we find ourselves giving back to God. No matter what subject you want to put in, when we give back to God, it's a blank. You decide, God's blessed me. This morning we gave back children, little Hayden, back to God. It gives us an understanding that there's a commitment. See, when we trust God, and we give back to him, not begrudging or holding back. It shows an act of commitment to who he is. And commitment means trust. We trust God. And the last thing, when we give back, it's a sign of claiming. We get to claim the promises of God. They are yes and amen. Scripture says that his own will not be out begging for bread. There were two or three are in agreement. It shall be so. See, claiming the promises of God is a benefit of who we are when we give back to God. I'm going to ask you to stand. I didn't even use my full 10 minutes, but we got to hurry. Got to hurry or my 10 minutes will be up. <laughs> After service, somebody comes up. I think that's a pill laying there. thought maybe it was a jelly belly, and I would have ate it if it was a jelly belly, but it looks like a pill. <laughs> Right there where that size 13 shoe is. Somebody come pick that up, make sure it gets towed away.
I'd do it, but I'd fall on my head, and you guys would be laughing. We'd have to leave. And <laughs> This morning, God wants you. God just simply wants you right where you're at, right where you're at in, in your life. God made a claim for you. When we were unlovable, he loved us. Amen. When we were unlikable, Roger, he loved us. He made a claim for us. Scripture says he knew us before we were ever knitted together in our mother's womb. It means that we were on God's mind before we were on our parents' mind. And all he asks is that we give ourselves back to him. Amen? Amen? So this afternoon, go back through. God was moving earlier. And for some that was feeling the need you were restricting... Allow God to revisit you this afternoon. Do it one-on-one -on -one with Him. But give yourself back to God this morning. Amen? Amen? Choose this day to give yourself wholly back to God. Heavenly Father, this morning I ask that you just bless everyone that is here. Those that are watching online, God, let them feel the anointing of who you are. Not the words of a man, but God, let them hear the heart of who you are. God, we thank you for the honor of dedicating Hayden unto you. God, we're thankful that we're able to come together as brothers and sisters. God, there's, there's things within us, Lord, that you look upon, and it just brings a smile to your heart. God, let us find that as we give ourselves wholly, completely over to you. That you will receive us. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. God bless you all. Enjoy this beautiful day.